If you use a firearm, you must remember that you're accountable for every round that leaves the muzzle. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Active self-protection exists to help good people like you better protect yourself and your loved ones. Today's video is an officer-involved incident out of Anaheim, California. I've got some really cool special stuff here for you today, but first, let's see what happens in the video. Want to take your knowledge beyond the narrated videos? Join us on Active Self Protection Extra and subscribe for multiple videos every week to help you get better in your defensive skills. Southbound West, failed to yield. Give us some distance, dude. Give us some distance. He's got, I think he's got to go. 417 out the window. Dude, give I'm us some. Give, dude. No. <laughs> Northbound Alley, 998 already. at us and then at himself both officers 998 so far code 4 we are eastbound water right, uh, hold on hold on too much and traffic here uh, buddy don't take a shot don't take a shot there's okay, people okay, in front okay. of us people in front of us all right i'm low on ammo do you have a nine yes give me one Boy, I got to be honest with you, I have some significant concerns with this video. If you appreciate the lessons you get here every day at Active Self Protection, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss a lesson. 
In today's video, I've actually asked my friend Chuck Haggard, we jokingly call him the legendary lawman, a longtime SWAT officer and training officer, to come and weigh in a little bit with me on this one from more of a police angle. And I want to talk today about accountability for every round that leaves the muzzle of your gun. I also want to talk about the danger of firing through glass and I want to talk about staying emotionally in control. Now, some of the lessons from Chuck are going to be here on the main channel, and we're going to put the entire interview I did with him on active self-protection extra. But let's see kind of what my concerns are here. Chuck, thank you so much again for coming back on the show, man. I really appreciate your perspective as a trainer and a, you know, a SWAT guy, a patrol cop, and those things. So let's just get into it, shall we? Sure. So... So far, Chuck, these guys have been called, you know, a man with a gun, and they show up, and yep, they've got him, so they come out with guns drawn. That's a good thing, yeah? Yeah, I, I agree. It's completely appropriate level of force. So, you know, again, because they get called to, a man with a gun acting erratically, they're going to respond to that with guns out. Yeah, one would expect. <laughs> well, I think some people that are not law enforcement officers, they'd, they'd question that. Wait a minute, why don't they come and talk to the guy first? But the guy does have a gun out, so I'm responding to that. If I'm forced to go there, and I am as a law enforcement officer on a call, I'm going with a gun out. Yeah, and, and in this case, contextually, it's, you know, they're getting a call of a guy acting erratically, waving a gun around, that kind of thing. That's not the same as uh, Joe open carry walking down the street, you know. Um, it, contextually, it's different. All right, Chuck, let's talk about this real quick. Uh, what do you think in general of shooting through a windshield? It's contextually, it can be a good tactic in the correct circumstances. Uh, I've seen videos of officer involved shootings where, uh, say, the whole chase ends up in a crash. The bad guy bails out right at the end of your hood and you're stuck behind the driver's seat, behind the steering wheel. Uh, and you got to you got to blaze through the windshield to get the guy. The problem with shooting through glass is it's 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 so hard on the bullets. There's a reason why modern manufacturers have had to create special bullets for police work to shoot through glass that will still pass the FBI protocols because glass tears bullets up, whether they're going in or out of the windshield. And when you start tearing the bullet up, it makes the bullet erratic. Uh, it's problematic shooting through a windshield at somebody in the driver's seat if you're the cop. Shooting out of the windshield has the same problems with tearing the bullet up, and then the bullets become randomly dispersed. I have uh, live fired this stuff shooting from the driver's seat through a windshield at a full value silhouette target seven yards away and had bullets completely miss the entire cardboard frame, let alone accurately hit the target. So that's that's a very real issue is um, shooting through windshields is only good for a certain amount of distance until you blow such a hole in the windshield that the bullets are passing through air instead of glass. And, and you know, you talk about at seven yards, seven yards is only two car lengths. So. If, if he's any farther than two car lengths away, it's even more, and it has to go through his car. Absolutely. You're shooting through a windshield into a car. So you have a moving car, uh, and cars are both cover and concealment, depending on where you shoot them. So B pillars, C pillars, reinforcing bars in the doors, things like that will stop rifle fire dead. Uh, so getting pistol bullets into a car is extremely problematic and it's a study in and of itself. Um, then the other problem with shooting at cars, particularly moving cars is bullets ricochet and they ricochet off of metal very, very well. So if you get a shallow angle hit, you're going to have bullets skipping off the car you're shooting at. If you, if you don't hit it in a spot that's going to absorb the bullet. Well, and okay, so not only that, now we have an officer who is trying to both drive his car and shoot accurately through a windshield. Is that even really possible? Shoot one-handed. How many people, how many of us do something like dot torture and where you start screwing up your hits is when? That's that number five dot. <laughs> yeah. You start throwing shots on your one-handed shooting. Police quals where you're doing one-handed shooting is typically most of them, they'll keep that at seven yards and in 
Why? Because people suck shooting one-handed. It's a fact. So now you're shooting one-handed from a moving car while driving the car through a windshield at a moving car. Uh, not just at a moving car, at a dude in a moving car. Because shooting a car does you no good. Shooting the dude in the car is what is, is, is effective. But, I mean, it just seems to me that, you know, again, I'm trying to drive my car. That's taking a bunch of my attention. And shoot one-handed with all these other problems. It just seems like a, a you know, I'm tilting at windmills here. There's just no way. The chances of me getting a good hit are incredibly slim. And let's talk about the fact that they're in a residential neighborhood on a Saturday morning. Uh, or Saturday afternoon is what it looks like, 1645. And, and there's people about uh, absolutely. Uh, your your odds of hitting dude, the bad guy you want to neutralize, are extraordinarily low. Your odds of putting a bullet into somebody's house, somebody's kid, somebody's car who is not part of the problem is very high. Um, I, I have no idea what the collateral damage on this call ended up being, but I would be stunned if there wasn't some out of this. Um, I would hate to be the guy that puts a bullet into a kid riding a bicycle down the street in a residential neighborhood that I, you know, I'd have to eat my gun. I wouldn't be able to live with that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, again, I don't talk about police procedure a whole lot, Chuck, but, but I think we can ask you about this a little bit. Uh, you know, if I see a guy like this, okay, he's, you know, a uh, man waving a gun around or whatever. And I feel like I got to stop this guy now. I'm thinking, I'd rather stop him with my car and see if I can get him pitted and at least get him stopped. If I end up having to shoot, then he's at least a stationary target. Am I thinking right on that? Uh, I think you are. Uh, if you could pit this guy and put him into the curb, put him into a tree, something like that. Uh, and then if you have to shoot him, shoot him. Uh, if it's going to be a Miami Vice car to car gunfight, then the driver driving and giving a stable platform to the partner who is going to hang out the window and shoot with two hands on the gun, maybe with a carbine, maybe with a shotgun. I have seen that done. I have some friends in Kansas City who had a car to car shootout with some suspects that had just shot a cop and the driver drove while the partner hung out the window with the carbine and put very accurate rounds on the suspect vehicle. Uh, it's a it's a bad day. It, it's a dangerous tactic. But if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. Um, I would I don't know if this department in question has a pit maneuver or TVI, which is a, it's what is called in some places. Uh, maybe they weren't trained to do that. Maybe they're not authorized to do that. So that, you know, what what you're trained to do, what you're authorized to do is always in play. Um, but. I'm just what I'm seeing here is not a high payoff tactic as far as success. And it's got a very high threshold of danger for the public we're supposed to be protecting. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I'd have to go back and measure them, but he was shooting those one handed shots really fast. Those look like, you know, quarter second to third second splits. I'm pretty good with a handgun and I don't think I can hit the broadside of a barn at quarter second splits at, at 10 yards. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, um, you know, and I've, I've, I have been known to shoot a pistol or two and I, I, I concur with your assessment completely. Okay. So, okay. We got an officer. He's still shooting here. We can see him going after it. Uh, now his partner here pretty quick is going to say, Hey man, you should be driving. Now you see the partner on the right has a handgun out and now, you know, he's reloading. So he's gone through an entire magazine in his, you know, service pistol. Now our support officer here is getting out the carbine. So he's finally doing what you're saying, uh, gets the carbine up. Now, interestingly to me, when I first watched this, he's going to get a few shots out there from it. And I don't know that they've done this before, because what we're going to see here is, is as he gets a couple of shots off, they go, oh, no. And they start saying their bowling words. Now, to me, that sounds like guys who have not shot a rifle in a car before, because the concussion is pretty ridiculous. Well, even with a handgun, it's redonkulous. Uh, without hearing protection, with the handgun, you're looking at permanent hearing damage. I guarantee mm -hmm. it. Now you got, do you have eye protection? Because you got windshield glass floating around inside your car. You get yeah, glass in your eye. Um, you breathe that glass. None of this is good for your health. Uh, I, When I had my car set up, I was ready to have to do stuff like this if I had to. I kept a helmet. I kept eye pro. 
uh, just just having a, if the suspect really started shooting and hit your windshield, the odds of the bullet hitting you is low. The odds of getting glass in the eye is very high. Whenever I started a pursuit, I reached over if I didn't have sunglasses on and I grabbed my clear Oakleys and put them on just in case. Um, but yeah, firing a carbine inside a car, I guarantee you these guys got work comp levels of hearing damage. Well, and they definitely said later that they had a hard time hearing. Seems to me as well, uh, Chuck, I don't know what you think about this, but again, as a law enforcement officer, much easier for you to have um, a, a rifle with a shorter barrel and maybe something like a suppressor on it so that you're not taking that much concussion. Is a good idea here? Uh, if, if you can do it um, and you got to look at the politics of where they're at right now, is that something that's viable? Is the department going to go for it? I know a lot of dudes on the job uh, SWAT guys, street cops that are fighting to get suppressors approved on the street because of, you know, spontaneous incidents like this, uh, they don't want to end up with permanent hearing damage. I've got permanent hearing damage from my job. Uh, these guys have probably got it worse from this incident. But yeah, if you can suppress a carbine, I would suppress a carbine. You betcha. Yeah. Okay, so you know we're gonna see these guys as they continue on here, and and again, finally, I, at some point, this officer is getting you know shot enough shots through this windshield that he's got a porthole. But you know, I, I mean, gracious sakes, they end up firing seventy six total rounds, only nine of which hit the suspect, which means uh, sixty seven, if my math is correct, went off into the neighborhood. That seems like a terrible number. So did they hit the suspect or hit the suspect car? Apparently, they hit the suspect. So they're going to chase him through the neighborhood. And you can see, I mean, obviously fisheye effect being what it is, it doesn't look like they're going crazy fast. I mean, they're in the, this residential neighborhood. It looks like they might be speeding a little bit, but, but not more than 40, 45 miles an hour. Did you see that little bit right there? I'm low on ammo. Give me one. Yeah. You know how uh, cops talk about uh, the fallacy of interchangeable magazines on duty weapons. And if you've shot up your, all your ammo, you're not getting any of mine. We're dangerously into that situation here. Yeah. If, if this guy pulled over and he wanted to fight and it turned into a gunfight, your driver officer has burned through a lot of rounds that he may desperately need all of a sudden. Yeah. So throwing rounds out there that you probably can't get hits on is depleting you for when you might really need them. Yeah, uh, I, I, I I hate to be negative about some of this stuff, but that's not exactly how I would have handled this one. Yeah, difficult at best. And again, I mean, you got to think about uh, the the safety of not just the officers. Of course, you got to think about that, but think about the safety of the public that you're there to protect. Now, I see that the support officer on the right is finally getting that carbine out the window to try to not get more, maybe more glass back at him and get good hits and let the driver drive. Put your gun away and drive and let me get in there and see if we can get some hits on this guy to get him stopped if we can't do a pit or whatever. Uh, but looking, man, there's there's a lot of people in this neighborhood, Chuck. Yeah, I I'm a, I'm agreeing with you on that. That's I'm really uncomfortable with what I'm seeing. So you finally get him out here, and he finally gets this car pulled over. And we can see that now the officer finally has gotten out, and and he has gotten uh, two hands on the gun. Okay, fine. His partner has got. The, the carbine out as well, and they are still going at it. So now our officer has at least finished a second magazine on the left, and he is going to completely get through a third. I, you know, again, in this point, at least he's moving and not staying stationary. There goes his third magazine he's done, and that's most of a fourth. Uh, now, now, again, I can't see what the officer sees, and I want to be very cautious of that. Boy, man, uh, the fact that his partner gave him a mag, I, I, four magazines seems like you've gone through everything you've probably had on your person. Am I right on that? It, it sure seems that way. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm hearing Tom Gibbons in my head. The number one cause of needing to reload is missing. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm really uncomfortable at this point with that they made the approach on the vehicle. Uh, if we learn nothing from New Hall, it's uh, the the bad idea of working our way up on cars that we don't have to. They left cover to get to this point. If this dude was still in the fight, if he was faking, if he was setting up an ambush, they'd be hanging out to dry right now. Um, I'm real. There is there was 
this isn't an active shooter. This isn't, I have to press down a hallway against resistance to save kids in a school. This is a dude in a car. Uh, I don't know what the drive, the draw to make the approach was right then and there. Uh, I think it's really questionable tactics at that point for their personal safety, for the safety of the officers. That was, it just was not a good idea. It paid off. Uh, I mean, it worked this time because, well, quite frankly, as far as we know, guy didn't have a real gun, but I'm yeah, not sure what sense. the draw. I'd be really curious to hear their rationale on why they made the approach on this vehicle the way that they did uh, when they did. So as a general rule, you tell them, stay safe on, on your cover of your vehicle unless you have to approach for some other reason. Felony car stop tactics exist for a reason, and we've paid for those lessons in blood. And so, quite frankly, somebody from California should know should know that. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that was the home of New Hall. Yeah. So, and again, now they're, they're getting up close here with just the two of them, and we know they're depleted significantly, and they're getting this guy out of the car. Obviously, he did not make it. So we got some significant challenges with this one.